Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil, writer to consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our recently developed wax goat, which is due to be launched in early December 2022. If you are interested in the wax coat, please do feel free to email info at clearwax.co.uk and we should add you to our mailing list. So we have here a patient who attended with a really blocked um, left ear and this earwax is medially impacted, so towards the eardrum. Uh, it's quite um, firm in consistency and texture. They had been using some drops prior, but although it softened the, the, the surface of this wax, um, as soon as you remove that, you can see it's quite firm and solid. The original view that you saw was taken with the eye clear scope endoscope, and you may have realized, you may have spotted that the ear canal, as you enter, the first bend was quite narrow, and then the ear canal protruded outwards, which can make um, removing the earwax a bit more challenging because there's a the plug of wax is actually larger than um, the entrance um, and the more lateral aspect of the ear canal. So I'm just commenced with um, uh, micro suction using a standard zolna suction probe here and i'm just trying to detach the wax plug from the canal walls but it's really strongly adhered uh, and you can probably see there um, some um, hair so the earwax is also matted and uh, so once again i'm just going to dilate the ear canal open and i'm just orientating it to face the roof of the ear canal and I'm now using a St. Bart's ear hook, um, gliding it through the speculum, through the roof of the ear canal. And then once um, I've entered the ear canal, I've rotated the hook clockwise uh, by 90 degrees. And I'm trying to get into the core of the wax and bring it forward. Now, unfortunately, the ear, wax, the ear hook um, just sliced through the wax. So it didn't remove it, but nonetheless, it helped to dissect it and break it up into little pieces. So I've just gone back in with the Zolder suction probe, just trying to suction hoover all those little fragmented pieces that I managed to create using the wax up. And you can see this wax plug is uh, just to the left at nine o'clock, you may see the second bend of the ear canal. And then the wax plug is beyond that. So it just shows that this patient's ear canal protrudes outwards. It balloons outwards. So as you enter, it's narrow, but once you're in, about a centimeter in, it expands and widens. And because the earwax is located more medially, it's filled up that bigger space, that bigger cavity. Now I'm using our 4.25 millimeter specular here. Uh, we have got three other different sizes. We've got a smaller size, a 3.5 millimeter. You can't really go any smaller than that for the purposes of earwax removal because then you won't have any maneuverability um, with the instrument itself. Um, and we've got a larger size than this, which is a five millimeter. Um, internal diameter and then we've got the largest one which is our 5.75 millimeter for so that they're for extremely large ear canals so once again i've just angled the wax goat to, to face the roof of the ear canal i've used the ear hook again just glided it into the core and just like the first instance although the hook isn't ex it's not bringing the wax plug out as i was hoping but it's still dissecting it to smaller pieces I'm just going to be very careful that we don't, as we're retracting the hook, we're not uh, embedding the hook into the surface of the canal wall and grazing it. It's going to be very traumatic for the patient and can uh, obviously cause injury and trauma and bleeding. So I'm just going here more to the base of the ear canal and then posteriorly to the back canal wall. It's quite a solid piece. And in a moment, I'm going to install some olive oil spray. So you can probably see on the screen um, the olive oil spray that I use. It's called Clear Ear Olive Oil Spray. And so it's medicinal grade olive oil. And from, with, with medicinal grade olive oil, uh, the way it's extracted, it's extracted without the use of any chemicals, which is not always the case with home um, used olive oil. Hence why uh, medicinal grade is far safer to use in the ear. Uh, there's no uh, chemicals, it's 100% uh, pure olive oil and it comes with a spray nozzle applicator for easy use and we're selling the clear um, olive oil spray both to uh, anyone watching this video, so to members of the public, so, um, 
So to purchase, please visit www.clearwax.co.uk and you can visit our um, shop and purchase the spray. We've also got some other products available there. Um, we also sell it to trade customers. So um, if you are an audiologist or a pharmacist or a GP or any ear care professional that um, uses the uh, spray like I do during my procedures or recommends the patients to use it prior to attending, which a lot of specialists I know do, um, you can actually buy them at trade price in bulk. Um, minimum order quantity is six units, so you do get a bit of a discount compared to the public shop because of that. Um, to purchase, please visit, again, our website, www.clearwax.co.uk. Select sign in, and once you select sign in, uh, you can register as a professional, um, and then you'll have access to our trade shop. Um, so clear our uh, UK base uh, just just to note we only ship to the UK so uh, please be do be aware of that and to clear are uh, actually not located too far from me the 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 headquarters are um, probably about 30 odd miles away so they're based in the East Midlands and they approached me about I think about six or nine months ago um, and I'm now their uh, appointed healthcare advisor and we are in the process of developing um, some more innovative um, ear care products, so do watch the space. And the, so for the, the, the function of the olive oil spray, so uh, you'll see in a moment, the wax is still quite tough, and I'm just going to use some olive oil just to loosen, soften this wax. Uh, with certain consistencies of earwax, it can be quite mushy and glutinous, and it's very hard to suction. And it's very hard to use any other instrument with that consistency of wax. So what the olive oil does, if you've been watching my video, is always comp I like to make food analogies. And the olive oil I would compare to an egg, for example, in a potato cake or fish cake recipe. It helps to bind the wax together um, so it's easier to suction. It also provides some lubrication to the ear canal walls and it also lubricates the internal suction unit. So as we're suctioning the wax, it, it just tries to stop it from getting blocked with inside the suction probe. Um, in terms of um, patients using it, so a lot of specialists prior for you to have your earwax removed, they would advise you to use some olive oil spray or drops uh, for up to five, even seven days, just to soften the wax, just to uh, make, facilitate the procedure, make it a bit more easier. Um, with ourselves, we, 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 we just, we can, you're more than welcome to attend without using any drops. Um, uh, we can use the drops ourselves during the procedure. So you can see I've just instilled it clear olive oil ear spray into the ear and it's just changed the consistency. It did make quite a lot of difference actually. Now at the base of the ear canal we've got this really thickened layer of skin, keratin. You may be able to see that. Um, so what I'm suctioning at the moment is um, earwax and just below that at about seven o'clock you'll see some more a lighter shade of debris and that's dead keratin. That was originally lining the ear canal. And then that skin has died and it's, a, it's just in the process of shedding and migrating and it's oxidized because it's been there for a while. It's turning yellow and eventually it will get darker, similar to the plug of wax. Now this wax is really, really lodged still. Um, it's, it's quite a severe impaction. It's up against the eardrum. So again, I'm just going to the roof of the ear canal. I've just adjusted the focus. I'm going to insert the ear hook again and I'm going to try and get into the core, into the middle of this. So I'm just going to turn it now. And once more, I'm just dissecting this wax into little pieces. But this time, um, as I was removing the hook, uh, some large chunks of wax also came out. If you watch till the end, you'll see a still image of all the, uh, the wax I extracted from this patient's ear. It's quite a significant um, haul. Um, another reason uh, for people to use olive oil ear spray is that... Um, some people suffer from dry, irritable ears, and um, so the olive oil spray helps to moisturize and um, nourish the ear canal more. Um, our ears generally do secrete oils and sweats, and that helps to, as I said, uh, lubricate and um, hydrate the skin that lines the ear canal. But sometimes, uh, our, some of us, our ears don't secrete those oils or not enough in quantity, and so the olive oil can help to uh, hydrate the ear canal so if you suffer from dry itchy ears it may may help um, in addition uh, olive oil is uh, hydrophobic so it can be used as a water repellent so if you if you do get water in your ears when you shower or when you bathe or when you go swimming for example you may want to use some oil in in advance just to help lubricate and repel any water that may enter water is bad for the ear so uh, 
the water can lead to swimmer's ear and an ear infection. So you can see this wax booger has been there for a while. It's really dark. I've just adjusted the focus again. And probably got a third of the wax out already. And this is the large lump. You can see I'm using those little wriggle movements with the sucker just to slowly extract this out here at the ear. So you can see with the wax scope, it really offers great magnification, um, clarity. The instrument's fully in view, it's not distorted, so when we're, it's just very, very um, necessary when you're working in the ear. Obviously, the ear is a very delicate organ, on average about less than a centimetre in height and about 0 0.7 millimetres in width. Um, so we're going to be, you need to really be able to see clearly what you're doing when you're in the ear. So that's one of the advantages of the wax scope. And it incorporates a speculum to help dilate straight in the ear canal. Um, so in comparison with the eye clear scope, the endoscope. So with an endoscope, in terms of the optics and views, in reality, there's nothing that can really compete against an endoscope because of the view it provides. It's a wide panoramic view. It's almost like you're in the ear. I will come back to that in a moment. So... We've got this uh, remaining bit of wax and skin directly on the eardrum. So we're just going to adjust the focus and we're going to remove this. This wax plug was also attached and stuck in the inferior recess. So I'm going to go up and you can see there's a little trench there at the base of the, base of the ear canal. It's just pulled it out of that and away from the ear. So, but um, yeah, an endoscope in terms of optics, um, you just can't compete, but... Um, it is a bit more skillful to use an endoscope because you're having to stretch and straighten the ear canal using the side of the endoscope. Uh, so it requires a, a lot of coordination between your two hands, so bilateral integration. Uh, with the wax scope, it, it comes with a specular, so that helps to straighten and widen the ear canal, so it's a bit more user-friendly. Um, you could mimic, you could compare, in, in essence, the view with the wax scope. It's, it's similar to uh, ANT operator microscope. Um, with an ENT operator microscope, you've got stereoscopic binocular vision. So here you're still able to acquire depth perception, but using monocular cues, uh, the two main cues that are used um, to get depth perception using uh, monocular vision is focus. So when you've got uh, the image in focus, um, that really does help you to provide uh, depth perception. And a phenomenon called motion parallax. You can compare motion parallax to if you're in a car, for example, and you're looking at the window. In the distance, whatever's in the distance, you're seeing that at a slower rate, but directly outside, adjacent cars are going much faster. And the difference between the image, the speed of um, the rate of change of the image nearest to you and furthest away to you helps your brain um, develop depth perception, similar to the ear, when you go into the ear and you're putting the instrument in, you're seeing it relative to other aspects of the ear, um, so that can give you depth perception. And also shadows, and when you know your landmarks. So here I'm focused, using a lot of um, the focus really, so I'm getting this dead skin, it's, it is directly attached to the eardrum, and I'm just trying to loosen this, pull it away. When I've got it in focus, I know I've got the correct depth, so it's really useful. Again, I've just adjusted the focus slightly. It was strike strongly adhered, so this wax burger was impacted right up against the eardrum. I think I managed to peel it away on this occasion. There we are. So once more, I'm going to stretch the ear canal. You can see the whole eardrum now. So. This wax plug it was directly attached to the eardrum. So you can see there's a bit of um, uh, vascularis of the blood vessels around the umbo region, uh, but otherwise everything's fine. Just some dead skin at the base of the ear canal. So again, I'm just gonna adjust the focus. Once I've got this in focus, like I have now, it provides me with a depth perception because the eardrum now is no longer in focus, but this is closer to me and it is in focus. I'm just using the fine end. I'm just going to lift this off the floor of the ear canal. Got to be careful because we are on the bony part of the ear canal. And if you are interested in purchasing uh, the clear olive oil spray and other products, I'm going to put the, the link to our website in the description. So we've just got some residual dead skin left. Just see how great the magnification is here. 
Now, some of the skin wasn't ready to be removed, so we're not going to overforce the issue. Uh, I'm quite content and happy with that. I'm just going to go back in here, and this is the, the moment where I realise that the skin's not just not going to come away. We don't want to try and peel it anymore because it's not going to improve the patient's symptoms, uh, and in addition, it's it's not ready to be peeled at, so. So I'm just going to go back in, visualise the eardrum, I'm going to get it in focus. And you just see anteriorly there's a bit of vascularis there as well. And that's because it was really heavily impacted. No attic retraction. So why is there intact eardrum? That's all the debris that I removed from the patients here. You can see it's quite... A significant amount of earwax. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video and again if you are interested in the waxscape please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you, bye.